Good morning. I hope it is for you. Okay. Um, for some reason, I'm going back for journals back a few months, and this one is from August 25th of this year, 2010, the second of that day. And it was an Ascension Day. The Mayan Day was 13 Monkey. It's got an intriguing title. I don't remember what it is. A New Look at Creation by ETs. It's a losing proposition recording these journals, you know. How is that? They keep multiplying faster than I can get them recorded. Oh well, it is what it is. I even thought about posting them all over to Scribd, maybe minus the fanciness of the colored emphasis, all the links in that, but then maybe not. And that's just crazy, I guess. We give things our best, wouldn't have it any other way. They're just raw material like that. The other gives them context and makes them easier or at least more pleasant to read. I hope so anyway. Did you know you don't even have to read them? The idea we have of reading, it's so linear. One word, then another. No, oh, it's handy and all that. I'm not ragging it or anything. I am saying though that we have higher powers and other ways of taking things in. Try this one time. When you go to the journal on Scribe, one of the more colorful ones, instead of reading it in the regular way, just scan it. Let your eyes pass over it, but not in a linear way, top to bottom. Just pretend you're the fastest reader around and let your eyes see each part of it, but don't pause. Keep your gaze moving. The color emphasis, which I used to do, especially helps the mind take things in this way. The main points stand out. Higher self, higher mind takes things in instantly, especially when highlighted like that. Besides, we are many, if not most, or even all of us, members of the tribe of many colors. I know I am rainbow crazy. The brilliant colors take me off into bliss. This is part of who and what we are. It rings those resonance bells inside. It helps connect us to that inner or higher self, the one that knows what we're doing down here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny once we get over resenting that we just don't know these things consciously. It gets funny then. We begin to relax, to sort of sit back and see how the beauty is there even in that. Pretty darn strange. Going into heart is a, a real surrendering of all that we thought we knew and understood. We were so convinced we were right on so many things. Then shock after shock comes to the mind as we realize we're not. We are not so bright as we thought we were. Not one bit. Now, to the extent that we're married to mind, this is tough. It can be difficult to take or not. It's always based on choices we come to see, on choices we're empowered to make. No, not mind. Mind doesn't get to make the choices for us. And yeah, there's the sticking point. Mind can't come in. Realize, look around you and realize this is where so many got stuck long ago and they wander around, many of them stuck to this day. Do you want that for you? Then you've got to come out of the head. While you're in there, you will never see this. So much is hidden from you. Even if your mind gets a sense that you're comprehending something, mind comprehension is insufficient. It is insignificant next to what can happen in heart. So just realize that's your choice. 
No one is doing this to you. You are in charge. You are choosing to let mine steer your boat. When the real captain is or could be you, one day maybe you'll see how you're doing this to yourself, but not till you vacate that space. As far as I know, it can't be done from there. And though mind wants to just gloss over this, skip over, go find some way that works, do you see that at work? Now, do you see the eternality of that? Do you see how you've spent, and we all have, whole lifetimes upon lifetimes that way? Chasing that? Well, are you tired of it yet? The choice is still yours. Be empowered, dear people. Realize that ever and always it is you, on some level, making the choices there in your life. And no, do not hear this from the mind. Go back into heart, and I'll say it again just for you. Be empowered. Realize that ever and always you make the choices. No one is forcing you. You are in charge, just not in the way mind would like to think of being in charge. If you've chosen to abdicate your place in favor of mind, you've the power to make such a choice. That's what the dark beings pushed us to. That's the choice that empowers them the most. You don't realize that, the fullness of that, and you won't, not until you vacate the head for the heart. People get so firmly identified with mind that they just can't be convinced they're not that. They can't even be pried out. There's no getting them out either. That's something only they can do. It will take whatever it takes to make them realize that. None of us can know what that is either, so don't go pushing your friends or your loved ones into this or that. That's not your job. Your job is just you. Think Byron Katie. She's got that down pat. And I'll say that again. Your job is just you. Get out of other people's lives. Stick to your own. Are you listening to that? Are you hearing it? I don't think so if you're in mind. Mind wants to gloss over this. Your job is just you. It's not up to you to rescue the planet or anyone else. Your job is just you. Pull your tentacles in. The light will do the rest of that. Sure, it may do it through you, but your job is just you. Hear this. The light will do that. It's not up to you. Do you want to participate in it then? Well, good, but rescue self first. As you do that, you'll just let go. Let go and let God, it was said, and very well put. For some emphasis on this, I do recommend Byron Katie. Beautiful teacher she is, with as simple a message as there is, pretty much. Let me rehearse it for you. First, no thought is true. Second, all suffering is caused by unquestioned thoughts. Third, there are three kinds of business in the world. Your business, my business, God's business. Learn to distinguish these clearly. We're all quite wound up in other people's business. And when we're wanting to save the world, the dolphins, the mosquito, whatever it is, or another soul, we're also involved in God's business there. That's the business of light. Trust in light. 
let go and let God. Fourth, love is the basis and foundation for everything. That covers it pretty well, I think. Comment me if I missed something important. I think the rest of her mission is just the application of this. Now, I'm not a great Byron Katie scholar or anything, so I may well have missed something, even something important here. The thing to do, though, is to go to her site, spend a few moments there for yourself, soak up her light, what she shares. Watch it in action, for she is very much like Muji, a being of action, of application, simple application of what she does. It really couldn't be simpler. And I'll put links in the transcripts, and my favorites are actually in my playlists. I have a, a Byron Katie playlist that has 20 or 30 clips that you can just go on through. So, if you do this, you will be helping untangle yourself from the mind and from other people's business and God's business as well. Do you want to do that? Do you want to be able to get help distinguishing true thoughts? Sorry, dear one, there are no true thoughts. We do the best we can speaking from light to lay down a trail a crumb trail to provide pointers to truth, but that's the best that can be done. Truth, and may you find this out soon, is too sacred, too divine. Christ didn't even try to answer Pilate on that one. It is much more than could ever be contained within words. We forget when we're identified with things, with 3D, that words are but symbols. They are the tools of the mind. Maybe, just maybe, we're beginning to know, to realize that mind can't go there, can't enter the heart. Still, though, we seem to believe that truth, which is found through the heart, can somehow be contained in our words. It just can't. Don't believe a thing that I say here, that anybody says. But we forget, conveniently, for mind. This is the pry bar we need to separate us from mind. Do you see that? How, once you begin to realize, to actually realize that no thought is or ever can be true, no words can ever contain truth, then you are enabled to step back from the mind a good bit. It gives you some breathing space. You poke your head up, maybe, for the first time above the mind. You see, there's life above this. What a surprise! Life after mind. It's actually a, a growing process. Mind has a, a higher thing to grow into. But while it has the bit between its teeth, while it's firmly control of the life, it's not growing at all. It doesn't need to. That's its read on things. It's perfectly happy. It's rebellious as hell. Or as a teenage child, you're just not going to win out and win in any out and out battle with this either. If you're a parent, you know this already. My advice is don't even try. Victory just doesn't lie there. That's mine's turf. Wrong field. Field of play. Let Byron Katie take you by the hand and show you the way out of the maze. It's a real blessing. You don't have to spend a dime either. There's enough from these dear teachers of light that's freely available online. Light does that, makes it accessible. So there's no excuse for not knowing you can explore this. Let it at least comfort you to know that it's there when you're ready for that. Follow your heart always. That's the big bottom line. 
no one else's enlightenment or path can truly lead the way for you. You're a leader yourself. Each one, each path is different, else why bother to have different people? What are they for? To be all the same, like machines? I don't think so. Oh well, I know that they are. there are many civilizations, unlike man's here on Earth, where there is much greater similarity in both the beings and much more simplicity in their environment. Ours here on Earth is apparently quite complex and unusual in that. Well, that's great. Designed just for us, or the reverse, who knows? Just don't get too lost in that stuff. The creation myths and all that. How much does it really matter to your now? And what are you avoiding while you're off chasing that? Remember that what was created there anyway was the bodies, the things that you see, not you. Souls aren't created by ETs, okay? Let's all realize that. So whatever tampering has been done with DNA, that's just bodies. Just because we may find very highly advanced civilizations of other dimensional or extraterrestrial beings involved in some way, maybe even involved in the creation of these bodies we wear, that doesn't at all negate or obviate source, the isness, prime creator, great spirit, God, Allah, or whatever you call that. Not one bit. Please see this. Again, it gets down to, who am I? Who is the I that was created? Don't identify with the body so much. It simplifies things. Please see this. In 3D, while we're focused and anchored there, so much is seen as either or, plus minus, yes, no. The polarization gets really intense. We've all, we've all seen this. Well, that's all coming together now. We're starting to see things more as one coin with two sides instead of such a duality as this endless either or, yes, no, white, black, and so on. As we rise up and out of 3D consciousness, we say goodbye to that, to that way of seeing things. So, try this on. Yes, there is still a creative force, but that one creates in spirit, in reality, and in truth, capital T. What is created in the phenomenal world is something else. The light of the spirit can and does inhabit that. To, the ex to that extent, there must be the partnership between beings and source. Else, we've nothing but a spiritless clone. And I suspect there's a good number of them running around. Do you begin and realize that the word being and the word begin are the same thing? Do you begin to see how, no matter what, God or source is still there? This can't be erased or wiped out. One can't explain the cosmos absent the isness, absent God, if you will. It's the life within things. It inhabits that. But it isn't the things in themselves. You're never going to be able to point to something and say, there, that is God. Oh, let me snap a picture and share it around. Come on. Thus, things can be created or designed by beings by you yourself. You're designing that life there. Do you see? Can you make room, make space within self just to allow this, to allow the possibility of it to just be? Can you let go of belief of your programming? I know it's on thickly this programming, but you can make space there within it for this 
if you will. It's a choice. Be in heart. Finally, let us all remember that truth always stands. It simply can't be erased or eliminated in any way. It's the old, it is what it is thing. Truth is found there. That's the echo of her. Let's all go within, friends and devotees of truth. Love is us.